Hey nerds, for my Modern Horizons 3 deck tech, I decided to build around Chill Gengar, Sire of Famine. This is my take on an Orzhov Blink deck, and in this video, we'll be going over the primary game plan, key cards, and finally the upgrades. As always, the final price of the deck must be under $50 or less, excluding the price of the commander, at the time of recording, and you can find a link to the deck in the video description below. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss when any of my videos go live. Alrighty, let's get into it. If you couldn't tell from the name of the video or like the thumbnail, I decided to build Shul Gengar as a Blink Commander. Now you might be wondering why I did that instead of like an Angel or a more traditional Sacrifice deck. I decided to build a Blink deck because of their reanimation ability. They return creatures with finality counters on them, which can be removed by blinking creatures. And what does reanimating creatures do? Well, it brings them back into play, triggering all of their ETBs again. And don't forget, you can use their ability at instant speed, so if someone's trying to exile your graveyard, you can still bring all your stuff back. Now, let's get into some of the key cards that make the deck function. First up is the Blink Package. The easiest way to remove all the finality counters from our creatures is to blink the entire board, and we can do that with Eerie Interlude, Ghostway, and Lazelle's Acrobatics. And because they hit your entire board, you're basically doubling all of your ETB triggers from your creatures. You'll reanimate them, and then you blink them all. And Cosmic Intervention, while well, not a blink spell in the traditional sense, it is an absolute powerhouse in the deck. This allows you to sack your board with finality counters and still return them to play. This is because both the finality counters and Cosmic's effect are replacement effects, so you get to pick which one resolves first. The remaining non-blink creature spells are pretty standard. They consist of staples like Ephemerate, Flicker of Fate, and Touch the Spirit Realm. Nothing fancy here, just solid value includes. Feel free to replace these with whatever blink staples look good to you. These are pretty often flex spots in decks. As for the creature blinks, we have Charming Prince, which really shouldn't be a surprise, and one of the best sleeper picks, in my opinion, is Abdel Adrian Gorian's Ward. Now, it's a slower blink since he exiles creatures under him, well actually it's non-land permanents, but he gives you a board of 1-1 tokens, which you can use your commander to sacrifice for blood, and then sacrifice him to return all your creatures to play. Next are some of the blink payoffs, like Ramp, Card Draw, and Removal. Now of course, we need creatures that benefit from being blinked and reanimated. First up is our ramp package with Clam Jumper. I always read this as Clam Jumper for some reason. Loyal Warhound, Core Cartographer, and Solemn Simulacrum. The cantrip creatures consist of the usual bunch with Walls of Omen, Spirited Companion, and Inspiring Overseer. Nothing too fancy here, just solid cheap creatures that give us value throughout the game. And finally, there are the removal creatures. Ravenous Chupacabra, Skyclave Apparition, Noxious Gear Hulk, Accursed Marauder, and Witch Enchanter. Next, let's talk about the utility creatures. These creatures don't necessarily benefit from being blinked or reanimated, but instead provide some other function for the deck. Now, for example, Fane the Broker and Sanctuary Warden provide additional ways of removing the finality counters from our creatures. I wanted to add a Hex Parasite, but I couldn't fit it into the budget. A recently added card to the deck was the least Revenant Medium. I overlooked her value when I first put the deck together, but she generates a spirit every time you make a blood token, or any token for that matter. And another creature I almost forgot was Mirror Entity. We can use this to turn all of our creatures into angels. Even if X is only two, that's still twice the amount of blood tokens we would get from our non-angels. Next is the blood token support. Now, I want to talk about Voltaren Bloodcaster and Glasscast Heart. Baldarin Bloodcaster doubles the amount of blood we would generate from our non-angel creatures, and then when it flips, we can turn our blood into 2-2 bats. While Glass Cast Heart can drain the table for 13 if we sacrifice it and 13 blood. If we have one or two of our win conditions that we're about to talk about in play, this should let you win the game pretty much on the spot. Okay, now to the win conditions. Unlike Azorius Blink decks, I found winning with Shill Gengar to be much easier. You could include some aristocrat cards, such as the new Marionette Apprentice, Marionette Master, and Nadir's Diplate to chip away at opponents' life totals as you sack creatures and or blood. Corpse Knight does a great job of pinging everyone when you reanimate your board, while everyone's favorite, Grey Merchant of Asphodel, or Gary, should easily be able to close out the game after being looped just a few times. And then finally, Agent of the Iron Throne is an enchantment that can help drain out the table. The only downside is you need your commander in play for this to work, but I think it's absolutely worth including despite that downside. And finally, let's talk upgrades. 
if you're looking to spend a little bit more money on the deck, there are some solid upgrades you could make. My first two choices would be Solemnity and Hex Parasite. Now be careful with Solemnity, since it is a non-bow with some of the cards in the deck, and then Hex Parasite is great at removing the finality counters from your creatures, and it can be used to remove counters from your opponent's permanents, like Planeswalkers. And of course, you could add more Angels with Avacyn Angel of Hope or Battle Angels of Tear, or additional sacrifice payoffs like Pitiless Plunderer. And that wraps up my Shield Gengar deck tech. Let me know in the comments if you think there are any key cards that I missed, and let me know what video you want to see next. I'll be releasing my Demir tier list real soon. I hope you give this video a like if you liked it, a dislike if you didn't, subscribe and ring that bell to get notifications when all my videos go live. Also, check out some of my other videos shown on screen here. Alrighty nerds, I'll see you in the next one.